It's interesting that Jesus, desiring to teach, would couch his instruction in word paintings. You would think he would make it plain to everyone. A ruler once came to Jesus by night To ask him the way of salvation and light The master made answer in words true and plain Ye must be born again Good morning, and welcome to the Bible Study Pal podcast. My name is Greg Circle, the preacher for the Church of Christ that meets in Palmyra, Indiana. On today's episode of the podcast, we begin our study of Mark chapter 4. The purpose of this study is to prepare for our Book of the Month series. January 2023's book is The Gospel According to Mark. Ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. Ye must be born again. Again, I verily, verily say unto thee, ye must be born again. Again. Let's get into the study. Chapter four, verses one and two. Teaching many things. In our last episode, we read about Jesus having a boat prepared so that he could put some distance between himself and the crowd so that he could teach them. This must have become a practice so that he could keep to his primary objective of teaching. He had a lot to teach, but it's interesting he used parables. A definition of parable is throwing a physical story out there alongside a spiritual truth to draw attention and illustrate that spiritual truth. So let's look at the greatest of all the parables. Mark chapter 4, verses 3 through 9. The parable of the sower. Now we might be tempted to call this the parable of the soils because that seems to be the determining factor of growth in the parable. We could call it the parable of the seed because that is what grows. The sower is only mentioned in the first verse of the parable and then what he does in the first part of the second verse. So only a verse and a half deals with the sower. So why is this called the parable of the sower? Well, in Matthew 13 and verse 18, we do read that Jesus is the one who called it that. So to him, we will defer. The physical side of the parable seems self-explanatory. The condition of the soil determines how fruitful the harvest will be. But let's take notice of a couple of the finer details. This is the parable of the sower, not the precision planter. He doesn't make nice, neat rows. He broadly casts the seed all over the field. And this is how Jesus taught, and those who had ears to hear would hear. The second detail to observe is the destruction of the seed in the rocky ground. Its withering is only correlated with the oppressive heat. The sun rose, it was scorched, and it withered away. But the cause, Jesus says, was that it lacked depth of its roots. Thirdly, the sower does not take responsibility for the readiness of the soil. He doesn't remove the rocks or thorns. He doesn't disk the pathway. His job is simply to sow the seed. And finally, it's interesting to notice that Jesus began with the command, listen. He ended with the command for anyone with listening ears. Listen. It's the same word. Mark chapter 4, verses 10 through 12. Why parables? It's interesting that Jesus, desiring to teach, would couch his instruction in word paintings. You would think he would make it plain to everyone. But Jesus quotes Isaiah chapter 6, verses 9 and 10 to give us the purpose of the parables. It's about our interest in his teaching. I think it's related to his previous statement, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. If they want to hear, they will listen and search out the meaning of what he says. Then again, there are many people who have minds that just like to analyze every little detail to figure out the hidden meaning in the data. They think they can figure out the answer completely on their own. They are always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth, 2 Timothy 3 and verse 7. So let's take a step back and look at what Jesus said before his quotation of Isaiah. Jesus told his followers that they were given the mystery of the kingdom, but everybody else only gets parables. Why do they get the answer? Why do they have it revealed to them? It's simple. They asked. Not only did they listen to Jesus, but when their analysis failed, why is Jesus talking about agriculture? They began asking him. So Jesus granted their request of explanation. Mark chapter 4 
verses 13 through 20. The Parable of the Sower Explained Before he explains, though, he seems to say that they should understand it. It's pretty plain, right? I mean, books and articles have been written on this parable for the last almost 2,000 years. We've understood this parable for a long time. How could they not get it? It's simple to us. I think we forget, though, they had yet to hear these words. But Jesus condescendingly asked, If you don't get this one, how will you get the rest? How difficult it is to read emotion in text. Again, Jesus' answer to this question is simple. You ask. What does that look like? For them, it was easy. As the meme says, step one, see Jesus. Step two, ask question. Step three, question marks. Step four, profit. What does it look like for us, though? If any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God, who gives to all generously and without reproach, and it will be given to him. James 1, verse 3. Ask. Start with prayer. Have faith. Believe that God will give you the wisdom. But remember that faith, if it has no works, is dead being by itself, James 2, verse 13. So we must read, study, actively listen, put in the effort to understand what God has to say. We must prepare our hearts to receive the word implanted, which is able to save your souls, James 1, verse 21. The hard-hearted may hear, but they do not listen, and Satan takes away the word as quickly as he can. As was emphasized in the parable itself, the rocky heart sees the seed sprout quickly. But as soon as someone turns up the heat, there's no moisture to draw on. They didn't dig into it enough. They didn't count the cost of their discipleship. They are caused to stumble. An interesting point about the explanation of the thorny soil is that it's not the world, the riches, or anything else that redirects the nourishment of the soil. It's the worry, the deceit, and the desire that starve the Christian. It's not the creation itself that's the problem, but the corruption of the will. And what of the good soil? Only that it is what provides seed to the sower, Isaiah 55, verse 10. In our responding properly and faithfully to the word of God, the seed can be harvested and used in the way God needs it to be used. Of course, it provides nothing if there was no seed to begin with. Thanks be to God that he gave us the seed, his word. Mark chapter 4, verses 21 through 25. Thoughts on Revelation. Having told his disciples that the mystery of God's kingdom had been given to them, he says, Let your light shine. Jesus brought light, and it was not appropriate to hide it. There is something to be said for uncovering the truth. This is what God desires for all men, 1 Timothy 2, verse 4. But one has to be willing to listen for the truth and listen in the right place. Oh, we are often ready to listen, but do we listen for the truth? What are we taking in? What do we accept as truth? How do we measure it? What is canon? Jesus said that we need to be careful what we listen to and use as a base for our judgments. We need to take care of how we measure ourselves and others because that's what they will use to measure us. Politics is really bad about this. It will often be reported as a double standard. One side elects a man who lied about his achievements, but then condemns the liar from the other side. And it will often escalate. One side merely laughs at the first liar, but the other side says the second should be fired. But God has revealed to us his standard for us. He is the source of that standard. If we take and use his canon to measure ourselves, we will be blessed. People will see our good judgment and seek our authority, which truly only belongs to God, our influence can grow. But if we don't use his standard, but try to use our own, we have no authority for judgment. And whatever authority we do have, we'll be lost. Mark chapter 4, verses 26 through 29. The parable of the seed. So we present this revelation from God, his word. We cast the seed wherever we can. We show the fruit of the Spirit, and that's all we can do. How that grows, the kingdom, we can't rightly divine. That's not our responsibility. We plant. We water. God gives the increase. 
Mark chapter 4, verses 30 through 32. The parable of the mustard seed. But there are many who won't accept God's revelation of His will. What must we do about them? Let's summarize Ezekiel 17 real quick. In Ezekiel 17, verses 1 through 10, we read of a riddle and a parable that Ezekiel is told to speak to the Israelites. But I think to kind of explain the riddle, we say those who do not depend on the authority of God but that of man will look to the most appealing system at the time. When they find a problem with one, they'll look for another. But if God's authority isn't the basis, the system will ultimately fail. If the seed is not healthy, neither will the plant be healthy, no matter how fertile the soil. In Ezekiel 17, verses 11 through 21, we have the explanation for Ezekiel to give to the people of Israel. The issue was that Babylon conquered Jerusalem. The Israelites were now their subjects. But the leadership of the time saw an attractive alternative, Egypt. And God said, that's not really any better. It's not going to work. Now, why did I go back to Ezekiel chapter 17? Let's read verses 22 through 24. Thus says the Lord God, I will also take a sprig from the lofty top of the cedar and set it out. I will pluck from the topmost of its young twigs a tender one, and I will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the high mountain of Israel I will plant it, that it may bring forth boughs and bear fruit and become a stately cedar, and birds of every kind will nest under it. They will nest in the shade of its branches. All the trees of the field will know that I am the Lord. I bring down the high tree, exalt the low tree, dry up the green tree, and make the dry tree flourish. I am the Lord. I have spoken, and I will perform it. Jesus quotes, or at least references, this passage in the verses of Mark that we are studying. And if God sets up the system, if God plants the tree... It will grow. It will prosper. It will be the place where even those who are in authority, the birds of the air, will have to make their home. Mark chapter 4, verses 33 and 34. With many parables. Mark concludes this portion of his account of the gospel in a similar way in which he started it. Jesus taught many things with many parables. This is how he spoke the word to them. As long as they listened... They got something. But if they needed something explained, they weren't out of luck. All they had to do was ask. All they had to do was follow him. Ye must be born again, again. Ye must be born again, again. I verily, verily say unto thee. We invite you to join us as we worship our Lord and study his word. Each Sunday morning at 9.15 a.m. for Bible classes for all ages. 10 a.m. and 5 p.m. for two distinct worship services, and each Wednesday evening at 6.30 p.m. for another chance to study and discuss God's Word. Occasionally, we may alter the p.m. service times for a special event. Please check palmyrachurchofchrist.org or our Facebook page for the schedule for the week. If you have any questions or would like to have a Bible study in person or by correspondence, email preacher at palmyrachurchofchrist.org or call 812-364-6215. Thank you for listening.